Welcome everyone. In this session, we will be looking at how Brocade and NetApp are working together to make the autonomous SAN a reality through end-to-end -end support of Fabric Performance Impact Notifications, often referred to as FPIN. Today we will be reviewing what Fabric Performance Impact Notifications are, as well as what their purpose is in the SAN. Then we will get familiar with the demo environment we will be working with to better understand the various parts of our FPIN demonstration. Lastly, we will recap our demo and touch on the benefits FPIN brings to the SAN environment. If you haven't done so, please check out part one of this series where we dive into how Brocade VM Insight and NetApp can provide VM level visibility into the SAN, allowing for improved troubleshooting and problem identification. FPIN enables Brocade to share events the fabric is aware of with any of the attached end devices. This in turn allows end devices to become aware of any existing issues related to congestion or path health, further providing the opportunity for end devices to begin taking autonomous actions to remediate such issues with zero user intervention. Fabric performance impact notifications can either be transmitted in software or with Gen 7 transmitted in hardware, providing more granular notification intervals and a guaranteed delivery. When end devices receive event-triggered fabric notifications, they have the option to autonomously respond if configured to do so. They can pinpoint congestion and notify peers, slow down requests in the case of oversubscription, reset to recover, or non-disruptively fail over to a healthy path when there are intermittent issues on a currently used path. NetApp has recently introduced support for RDF registration on their arrays, beginning with ONTAP 9.13.1 RC1 and later, which enables the array to receive fabric notifications. This feature not only allows NetApp arrays to become aware of congestion or path issues, but also improves the visibility to the NetApp support teams to help isolate and mitigate issues using the information logged by the arrays. Before we get started with our FPIN demonstration, let's get familiar with the environment we will be working with. We are running a dual fabric setup where the currently active path is Fabric A. On the left hand side we have a Red Hat host, RHEL 172, running version 8.7, attached to port 4 of Fabric A, and port 1 on Fabric B. On the right hand side we have a NetApp A300 array with a 96 gig LUN configured, connected to both Fabric A and B, through ports 18 and 25 respectively. The connection between the Red Hat host and port 4 of Fabric A will be experiencing an intermittent link impairment, which leads to a potential performance impact. Most of the time, this tends to be due to failing cables or failing SFPs in the path. We will step through the use case and observe path behavior when FPIN is disabled, as well as when FPIN is enabled. To kick our demo off, let's start off by getting familiar with what's on our screen. On the top row, we have our Red Hat host, also known as RHEL 172, where we will be monitoring the MPIO path status at one second intervals. We then have a window monitoring Fabric A storage traffic on port 4, and a window monitoring Fabric B storage traffic on port 1. Next, we have a general console window, which we will use to view any logging of FPINs occurring on the NetApp array. We will also use it for enabling the FPIN feature and for monitoring FPIN statistics in the brocade fabrics. At the bottom left, we will be showing a graphical representation of throughput as traffic begins to run on our management station. Lastly, we have our environment topology to refer to as we step through the demo. To get started, let's validate our host and storage are capable of using FPIN in Fabric A. Using the Fabric Notification Show command on the brocade switch, we come to find that the host on port 4 has had a successful RDF registration, which is how devices can negotiate the support of FPIN upon Fabric login. We can also see what Fabric Notifications it has registered to. In our case, the FPIN link integrity capability is what we will keep our focus on. FPIN statistics can also be seen with this command. Looking at the NetApp storage connection on port 18 of the switch, we also see a successful RDF registration, showing that it has also registered for link integrity FPINs. As the demo progresses, we will come back to this output to validate when FPINs have been issued to either the host or the storage devices. Now stepping into the NetApp ONTAP CLI, let's start a statistics capture on port 1B of both controllers of the NetApp array for us to refer to and validate any FPINs that are incoming from the fabric. With the sample ID that's generated, we can inquire specifically for the ELS FPIN counters. Here we see the counters for congestion notifications, delivery notifications, link integrity, 
and lastly, peer congestion notifications, all of which we previously saw the array register to on the switch. Let's begin our first run with the FPIN feature disabled. Note that our workload will run for about three and a half minutes. As the traffic starts running, we are hit with the initial link impairment, which causes our traffic to halt or incur a SCSI timeout. Typically, these last around 30 to 60 seconds, depending on device configuration. In our case, it's just 30 seconds. As the test proceeds, we see that we continue incurring SCSI timeouts as we experience intermittent link impairments. If we look closely at our RHEL 172 host, both paths still have a status of normal, even though traffic has halted a few times already, and even attempted failovers with the startup of the traffic after the timeouts. Another thing to note is that the Fabric A path continues to be used regardless of the issues we are experiencing at the link. Now let's see what happens when we enable FPIN. To start, we will configure the FPIN action on Brocade Fabrics A and B via the Maps Action command. Note that when configuring via the CLI, we have to preserve all other actions previously enabled and just append the FPIN action. This can also be easily configured via the SAN Nav Management Portal. Since both host and storage ports have already registered upon Fabric login, this is the only configuration that needs to take place to begin taking advantage of the Fabric Performance Impact notifications. Let's start our next run with FPIN now enabled and observed for differences. As we come to find, we hit our first SCSI timeout due to the link impairment issue. Once we recover from the timeout, we notice Fabric B is now carrying the traffic, and the SDC path on our rel host is now set to marginal and will no longer be used. When we dig into the FPIN notifications, we see that port 4 in the Fabric A issued a link integrity FPIN, prompting our rel 172 host to automatically fail over to a healthy path. Not only was the host alerted, but also when looking at our NetApp statistics capture on port 1B, we see that it has also received the same number of link integrity FPINs. As the test progresses, the Brocade Fabric continues to issue Fabric Performance Impact notifications, which are being logged by both the host and storage. The information logged by the array can be critical to the NetApp support team in helping isolate and mitigate any issues present related to congestion or path health. So what's the benefit of making use of FPIN? In our use case, we were experiencing what's referred to as a sick but not dead link, which can go undetected due to the fact that traffic is still technically flowing and the link is not down. This causes the sawtooth behavior shown and performance will tend to suffer. On the other hand, when FPIN was enabled, we notice a difference in our graph. We only see a single instance of the link impairment before the fabric captures the impairment event and notifies the end devices of the issue via FPIN. In turn, the host and array autonomously fail over to a healthy path to avoid the intermittent performance issues seen in the graph above. The benefit fabric performance impact notifications introduced to SAN lies within the fact that autonomous actions are taken without user intervention. Since end devices are becoming aware of the various conditions captured in the fabric, this further reduces the impacts to the SAN as well as the time required by end users to identify, troubleshoot, and apply a fix to restore IT operations. Thank you for watching. To learn more about what Brocade has to offer, please visit Broadcom.com.